Welcome to The God Culture, where we urge you to challenge tradition as 1 Thessalonians 5.21 tells us, Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. We do not intend to be confrontational, but to compare what the Bible really says versus the traditions of men, which Jesus himself rebuked. Jesus said to the Pharisees, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Mark 7, 9. We are continuing our Solomon's Gold series today by exploring the algum mystery of the wood used to build Solomon's temple. Solomon's navy left from the Red Sea to go to Ophir, and they returned with many resources such as gold, but also the mysterious algum tree from the land of Ophir, which we have identified as the Philippines in this series. We believe it to be the same land in which Sheba and Tarshish are located as well. This subject is a little less definitive regarding the Algum mystery. However, we are breaching this in this series because it ties to Israel in an undeniable fashion, including Hebrew, and we'll explain. Even the definition of this special wood will be certain to gain your attention. And we'll go even deeper. So hold on to your seat and let's chop chop. Okay, bad pun. Moving along. 1 Kings 10, 11, and 12. And the navy also of Hiram, that brought gold from Ophir, brought in from Ophir great plenty of almug trees and precious stones. And the king made of the almug trees pillars for the house of the Lord, and for the king's house, harps also, and psalteries for singers. There came no such almug trees, nor were seen unto this day. Almug trees from the land of Ophir. We will establish with little room for doubt in this series that Ophir, Sheba, and Tarshish are in fact the same land which is ancient Havilah prior to the flood, which is modern-day Philippines. So, this almug wood was used to make pillars for Solomon's temple. Why would Solomon build a brand new port and brand new navy to go to one place on a three-year journey? Because this place was the ancient land from early Genesis, where the gold is good and it abounds in resources that have special meaning to the descendants of Noah, because it was his ancient land, and we believe we prove this by the end of this series. We'll address this in this segment because it involves wood as well. Notice the almug tree is foreign to the Middle East, as there came no such almug trees, nor were seen unto this day. In other words, the almug tree is foreign to the area and does not grow there. It is not native. So any tree growing in the Middle East should be crossed off the list, and we should be looking for a tree that only grows in other portions of the world. That would be good for building. This account is paralleled in Chronicles. Second Chronicles 9, 10, and 11. And the servants also of Haram, Hiram, and the servants of Solomon, which brought gold from Ophir, brought Algum, Almug, trees, and precious stones. And the king made of the Algum, Almug, trees, terraces, we saw earlier, pillars, to the house of the Lord, and to the king's palace, and harps and psalteries for singers. And there were none such seen before in the land of Judah. Once again, notice, None such seen before. This is a foreign wood. Here we find the word algum instead of almug, 
But this is the same story. It's the same word. You find Haram instead of Hiram, but they are the same person. Also, this account says the terraces were also made of this Ophir wood, and it would make sense that both the pillars and the terraces were made of this wood. Both passages are clear. This is a special Ophir wood. Notice these two renderings of the temple on your screen. What color are the pillars? What color are the terraces? They are red. So we are likely seeking a red wood. And according to several sources, this Ophir wood is in fact a red sandalwood. We would like to point out that no one seems 100% definitive on this. However, let's test the red sandalwood and see if it fits the rest of the elements and placement of Ophir from all the other many angles we cover in this series. The red sandalwood tree narrows our research drastically as it is a hemiparasitic tree native to semi-arid areas of the Indian subcontinent. It is now planted in India, China, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, and northern Australia. In other words, this tree brings us right back to the same place, the Orient, East. Is this a coincidence? We do not believe so. Notice how this shows the Philippines once again. However, this definition overlooks the highly special native red sandalwood of the Philippines. Oh, this one's going to hit you. The Nara tree, which is the national symbol of the Philippines, is termite and moisture free and terrific for building even boats. And this red sandalwood grows as tall as 25 meters or 100 feet tall. But there is a larger reason to consider this as the special Ophir wood. Nara in Tagalog, Filipino, pronunciation Nara is the very same as the Hebrew word Nara. Coincidence? We do not believe so, because the meaning of Nara really binds all of this together. Both mentions of the Algum and Almug tree are in the middle of the story of the Queen of Sheba because they came from Ophir, and the land of Sheba is in Ophir. This definition ties it all together once again. Nara, in Hebrew, means she who must be admired. You mean like the Queen of Sheba? Oh yes, admirable, wonderful, worthy of admiration. Young girl. Hmm. Again, it describes the Queen of Sheba as a young girl. So those buying into that occult story from the Ethiopian Kibra Nagast we cover in the Queen of Sheba segment may be even more wrong than they realize. But something has been impressing on us the entire time we researched this item. Why is this Ophir wood so special to King Solomon, as well as the gold, especially since David already put aside some gold for the temple and resources, and Solomon received gold from kings annually according to Scripture? Why build a new port and a new navy to go to one place so far away? What's so important about this gold and wood? It is because of the land. We will cover the ancient land of Havila in very great detail in part 10 of this series, as we believe we have uncovered that Adam to Noah 
lived in Havila, which became named Ophir, which is Philippines today. Sticking with the wood of this segment, however, we believe that we may be able to shed light on an even greater mystery. What wood did Noah use to build the ark? Genesis 6.14, make thee an ark of gopher wood. This is God speaking to Noah. This reference to gopher wood alludes scholars to this day. Strong's defines gopher wood as a kind of tree or wood of uncertain derivation. They note the word gopher is not of Hebrew origin and unknown for that matter. And this is the only passage in the entire Bible where gopher wood appears. What are we missing here? In our exhaustive research, we came across a reference we could not ignore. It seems in 1828, Noah Webster's American Dictionary oddly renders a definition for the wood used to build Noah's Ark, but not as gopher wood, but instead as ophir wood, a species of wood used in the construction of Noah's Ark. O-P-H-E-R is a variant spelling of O-P-H-I-R, Ophir. Have we actually found a clue here that finally enlightens us on this unknown gopher wood? Perhaps, but maybe this is a mistake. So we found yet another source in our research from the same time period, which is significant. In The Pilgrim's Muse, a poetic book published in 1816 in Virginia, in the U.S., author and minister Joseph Thomas also recites Genesis 6.14 as, Make thee an asylum of Ophir wood. What? Not gopher wood? Ophir wood, from two credible Sources referring to the building of Noah's Ark. Note, Ophir is capitalized in this passage, as it would be if it is a place where the wood originates, not necessarily a type of wood itself. Did Noah build the Ark with the wood of Ophir, Ophir wood? Is this why it was so important for King Solomon to build a special navy? to retrieve this special Ophir wood and Ophir gold because it is from Noah's land and it is the actual wood used to build the ark? But what about the ark? Didn't it land in Turkey, as is suggested by most scholars? We're glad you asked. In part 10 of this series, we will prove without a shadow of doubt that the Ark could not have possibly landed in Turkey based on biblical evidence. Don't miss that one. We do need to deal with one more Algum tree scripture as it's the only other place it appears in the Bible, though. 2 Chronicles 2.8 Send me also cedar trees, fir trees, and algum trees out of Lebanon. For I know that thy servants can skill to cut timber in Lebanon. And, behold, my servants shall be with thy servants, even to prepare me timber in abundance. For the house which I am about to build shall be wonderful great. And behold, I will give to thy servants the hewers that cut timber 20,000 measures of beaten wheat and 20,000 measures of barley and 20,000 baths of wine and 20,000 baths of oil. This scripture is sometimes interpreted to mean that the algum tree grows in Lebanon. But that is not what it says, and we just read that the algum tree was foreign to the Middle East in Scripture previously. 
It says they cut timber in Lebanon here. Certainly the cedar trees come from Lebanon, but this does not mean that the balk wood was not brought in from elsewhere and cut and hewed in Lebanon, where they had the tools and skill to do so. The word hewer here is the Hebrew word kal tab and means to chop or carve wood, cut down, hew, polish. So even though it could simply mean to cut down, we agree, which by the way, Hiram's men could also have chopped them down in other countries, other areas, not necessarily Lebanon. But the definition includes carving and polishing the wood. Note Solomon, in his request, uses the language to Hiram, prepare me timber. Finish it as well. He's not just referring to cutting the trees down, but carving and finishing them. We read earlier in 1 Kings and 2 Chronicles that the navy also of Hiram that brought gold from Ophir brought in from Ophir great plenty of almug trees and precious stones. Where did these almug trees come from? Well, Scripture says they came from Ophir in two sources. They came from Ophir. Now, in this source, it's not going to overturn those two sources, but instead complement those. So, in this case, it clearly means to carve and to finish the almug or algum tree in Lebanon, not that they're native to Lebanon. Scripture interprets Scripture once again. While we are at it, let's take a quick look at the other resources Hiram brought back from Ophir. Second Chronicles 9.21 For the king's ships, Solomon's, went to Tarshish with the servants of Haram, Hiram, king of Tyre. Every three years once came the ships of Tarshish, bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks. We have established that Tarshish is Ophir and Sheba, which are modern-day Philippines, and we'll further establish that in this series. So let's take a look at this list of resources mentioned here. Which of these is native to Ethiopia? And which is native to Yemen? And which is native to the Philippines? This actually tells it all. This chart shows that all three areas do in fact have gold and apes. Ethiopia has three of the seven criteria on this list, and so does Yemen. This means they fit the scenario at a percentage of 43%. However, only the Philippines fits all of these 100%. For those wishing to question the ivory, elephants were native to the Philippines up until the 1300s to 1600s, according to Wikipedia, and then they became extinct there. Even Wikipedia recognizes Philippines as mining gold since 1000 B.C., which is the same era in which the temple was built. Philippines does in fact have a native ape and peacock and matches across the board 100%. Still doubt Philippines is Ophir, Sheba, and Tarshish, and ancient Havila? You are only on the third video of our series. Stay tuned for far more proof. We had seen some of the claims that Philippines was Ophir, and some support was given 
However, we decided to search this out from every angle, especially from Scripture, and prove this beyond doubt. We feel this conclusion of this series will be obvious to virtually all who review it in its entirety. So please make sure to view the rest of the series. In this particular segment, we believe that the circumstantial evidence is greatly on the side of the Philippines regarding their red sandalwood, the Nara tree. The name Nara has Hebrew roots and ties to the Queen of Sheba. Scholars have difficulty identifying the exact tree because they have not brought all of the clues together. The land abundant in all of the resources listed in the trips to Ophir is Philippines, and we will further reveal that the explorers referred to the Philippines as Ophir as well as Tarshish. We will unveil several other Hebrew names that are embedded into the history of the Philippines, and in our last series, we will blow your mind completely by using the actual map of the ocean floor to prove where the river from Eden is, and most especially, where the Pisan River, which surrounded the pre-flood land of gold and resources, Havila, was and is. Certainly, there will be debate about one point in our presentation or another. However, when one views this entire series, the total evidence which links together in many ways is far too overwhelming to ignore. Philippines is Ophir, Sheba, and Tarshish, Havila. The special wood, gold, and resources that Solomon sought for the temple were from the land of his ancestors, Havila, where Adam to Noah lived before the flood, and it was rediscovered after the flood by Ophir, Sheba, and Havila, the sons of Joktan, from the line of Shem. They settled there together, and Solomon went there to get those resources that are documented even by Job and David. He knew that ancient Havila was present day Ophir, and we know. Ophir is now called Philippines. In fact, Noah may well have built the ark out of his native home wood, Ophir wood, not gopher wood, which, according to two sources, was the wood he used. If Ophir is Philippines and the red sandalwood of the Philippines is the Nara, which is its national symbol for great reason, then Nara would likely be Ophir wood, and the ark would be built of Nara, which is why it is so special to Solomon for use in the temple. Again, we are pulling this together a little more so than many of our other videos, but everything fits together regarding the Algum mystery, and we feel confident in suggesting Nara is the wood we are looking for here. Thank you for watching our Solomon's Gold series. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The God Culture, and view our website at thegodculture.com. Always remember to prove all things for yourself. Thank you.